Okay. Um, feel free during this talk to have your questions to the panel. It's very hard to see it's the audience to see. up from here. But if you raise your hand, my colleague Anna, where are you, Anna? There you are. She has the microphone and she will run to you and Those are really try bad to, lights. to see you then. <laughs> but first of all, I have a question to the panel and especially to the CCTLDs. Uh, in the market situation now with the new GTLDs, have you had any um, legislation, new demands in your country? For example, in Sweden, our regulator, PTS, have investigated and suggested changes to the top-level domain law in Sweden. Uh, one of the changes will be that uh, uh, it should also cover the, the new GTDs if they have geographics, geographical ties to, to Sweden and are of national interest. Have you had that in your countries also? Okay, Lisa. Well, in, uh, in Denmark, we had a revision of uh, the Domain Name Act and that was uh, done in 2014. And uh, now it's the Danish uh, business ministry or business authority that can, um, when you have a CC, not a, C, a new GTLD with um, relation to Denmark, they ask the country if it's dot Copenhagen or dot Denmark, whatever. And it's, uh, they have now the competency to, to actually allow or make non-objection or so they know how to deal with a new GTLD that okay Johanny uh, thanks uh, so we had a discussion with our ministry regarding this issue and uh, I think the result was that there's no need for special legislation for new GTLDs we have some uh, Finnish applicants or registries nowadays, for example, the city of Helsinki applied for .Helsinki, but, uh, but uh, still uh, we thought that it's enough that uh, they are regulated by ICANN. So uh, this uh, Finnish Domain Name Act and Finnish legislation, it's uh, primarily for uh, .fi and for .ax only. Okay, well on, yeah. yeah. Uh, until now, we have... Uh, managed to convince the Icelandic government not to put a law on the dot is. Uh, and uh, there is uh, also, there's only, we are self-regulated body and, uh, and there are just the ISNIC rules about the dot is. But uh, in the uh, last legislation period, we had for the first time in Iceland the left, uh, fully left-wing government, which wouldn't, wanted to put a heavy legislation on the domain, but uh, that didn't happen. And uh, frankly, when I when I read the uh, about what's all what, what is going on uh, in the in the EU about the EU directive, uh, I, I can just see it that putting on a legislation on a, on a, on a domain business is, is very is very difficult, if not impossible. And I urge everybody to uh, to uh, to look in a book. It's called uh, "Simple Simple Rules for a Complex World." I don't think that the, the there's no need to put a special law on domains, in my opinion. And the situation in Ireland, Mikael? Um, well, okay, on the GTLD side, the dot Irish, there was no opposition or anything from the government because it wouldn't even be covered by the ICANN rules. Um, I think there was some communication at some point in the past, I'm not 100% sure there was no issue. With respect to the CCTLD.ie, um, there is legislation there which gives the communications regulators some oversight on .ie. Um, so the .ie, the company that runs .ie has been forced to, um, how can I put this genteelly, um, has been forced to play nice with industry a little um, and set up a policy advisory board about a year ago which of course I'm on, and has been making ch some changes to policies, uh, though it's a slow and rather painful process because you're dealing with an entity that 
up until now has never ever had to um, be really accountable to stakeholders. Okay, thank you. Uh, I covered in my speak, speech that the new GTLDs weren't successful in Sweden mainly because of the visibility. But are there other things which we can, which you can see in your local market why they aren't successful, the new GTLDs? We should, should we start with uh, Mikkel from the... Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. What, what is your definition of success? No, no, but, no, hold on. No, no, hold on. No, I mean, this, this is one of the things that I think it depends on which TLD you're talking about, how success is going to be defined. So in the case of some of the cultural linguistic TLDs that we've got out there, I mean, the one everybody talks about is always going to be .cat, but now you've got .eus, .gal, uh, and others. So in the case of, say, .eus, um, their target for 31st of December 2015 is 5,000 registrations. It's not a huge number. It's, it's, and for them, if they hit that number, that's considered to be success. Now, speaking as a registrar, my definition of a success is always going to be how much money have I made? I mean, come on, let's face it, we're, we are not a not-for-profit, we are not a, a fuzzy-wuzzy charity. We are in this to, to make money, to bring value to us and our shareholders, which would mainly be me. Um, <laughs> so, in the case of new TLDs, I think part of the problem we've seen today is that, with one or two exceptions, most of the registries have done little or no marketing. They haven't spent any money on building up uh, the awareness. They haven't built any strong branding around their TLDs. Uh, there's no awareness in the market. And until that changes, I can't see any volume of registrations appearing. Because until people kind of think, oh, um, my business is photography, therefore I need a dot photography domain, or I do something with bikes, I have to have a dot bike domain, or whatever TLD it is, until you can change that perception, that idea, you're not going to see success. Okay, thank you. Yuani? Uh, I agree that this success is a very relative issue. I think those are expectations that uh, I think all we shared in 2008, 2009, when this uh, new TLD program was launched, I think those expectations, they were unrealistic high about this early phase uh, su success. Um, but uh, if you think that those uh, new TLDs, they are very young now and they have those registrations and they have quite steady growth. If you remember that uh, graph I showed about the situation in Finland, so there was growth, it was quite stable. Even the numbers were much lower than what we are having with .fi, but actually if you compare, compare that uh, growth uh, with the growth we had many, many years ago, they are quite similar. So I think the success, uh, it's about to come, so it just takes time. And the time is maybe not yet, but it requires that people will uh, learn about these new TLDs. They would be, get this awareness what they are, and they would get trust on them. Okay, thank you. Lisa? Uh, well, in, in Denmark, the Danish uh, domain has been uh, open for many years. I think it's almost 10 years. Uh, so everyone has been able to uh, register a .dk domain uh, name, and that's made a, a very good foundation for uh, the market share we have in Denmark. And I think that's pretty uh, difficult to, to, to beat, and I think it's going to take some time until you actually uh, get used to the new GTLDs as as I, I think uh, you're saying that we, they need to understand, oh, I'm a photographer, I need that photography. Well, I think this, yeah, I mean, that's part yeah. of it. I think yeah. the idea that you have an affinity with an extension. Yes. So, for example, now at the moment, no matter how hard <laughs> I tell my clients, do not register .ie, register .irish, mm. they still want that .ie domain name, even though it's a very, very bad idea. Don't register .ie, register .irish. No, but 
I mean, jokes aside, I think that's the thing, is that you want to get it to a point where they automatically think, you know, I'm a club, I'm going to register dot .club. Uh, I'll throw a bone to Francesco. My company is in the cloud, I'm going to get a dot .cloud domain. Francesco, you owe me a beer. Um, you know, that's, that kind of thing is going to take time. But I, I think in Denmark you have another factor, and that is we have a, a complaint system that's easy. Uh, it's built on Danish law. It's uh, very but cheap. People, no, but, but come so on, that's, so like saying, that's like saying, though, that yeah. I'm going to choose uh, a car because when it crashes, the, they're going to fix it for me quickly. No, actually, what I'm saying is that uh, a lot of people have been afraid of, of using .com because if there was any dispute, it might be expensive, it might be difficult. Uh, and I think that knowing that in Denmark it costs you uh, 20 euros as a, a private and 50 uh, or it's actually 70 as a, a company, it makes people more confident. But I'm not, I'm just, this is a perception, it's not the truth. And I can see you disagree. I disagree with you strongly <laughs> yeah. because yes. I take my average customer, my average mm. client is a small business. They don't mm. understand technology. No. They don't understand domain names. They don't understand the internet. They do understand that they need a web thing. Mm. They need to have email. And we're trying to, and the big challenge we all have now is trying to convince them that they need more than a Facebook page, that they need more mm. than an Instagram account that they need more than a Twitter handle. Because what we see a lot of is small businesses that get, think, oh, I've got a Facebook page, that's me online. I've got a free Gmail email address, I'm covered. So I think for a lot of them, no, the dispute thing is not mm. going to enter into it because they don't, they're not going to get that far along. Now, for a big company, a big software company, a Fortune 500, or I don't know, a company that's spending a lot more money and all that, sure. Yeah, that's a different about, thing entirely. About Facebook, yeah. I mean, I've seen more and more Swedish brands which used to use .se or .nu domains for running campaigns in the local market. They use Facebook. Should we be afraid of .facebook and .google, for example? Yes. You yeah. Be okay. afraid, be very afraid. I mean, the thing is this, Google... Well, what, what was the question? Be afraid of Facebook regarding the selling of, of, of top-level domains? No. No, I think, I think that's not what he's saying. I think he's, the question is, should we be afraid of Google and Facebook? No. And yes, the answer to that is yes. No. Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> if you're just going to keep saying... Uh, that, this is what I thought, uh, like... Uh, I mean, six, I, I can six, argue with six, you about this, you're just going to say no. With them, with I've, I've experienced it. I, I'm, I'm in the business for the money, just like you. Good. And, uh, yeah, you're and, a shareholder. We have yeah. two shareholders here. Right. And, uh, and uh, this is what I thought like 12 months ago. I would have sold you my shares for, uh, well, not that little, but... But we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, later. <laughs> I'll, I'll the thing is that, 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 that I'm realizing that, that uh, you're always learning, of course, but I'm realizing now that Facebook, Google should be f afraid of Facebook. Okay. Not, not me and not us. Because what, what, what Google was doing for us uh, two or three years ago, Facebook is doing it now. Facebook is more or less like a search engine. You search for everything on Facebook okay, and you find we, it there. Were you, were you at the keynote this morning, the second one, where yeah. the, the gentleman was talking about yes. you know, the, yes. the way and that I, stuff and is I, changing? Yes, and I, and, I, and I went outside and I shook hands with, with him and, 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 and I, was, I, I totally agreed with him about uh, how Facebook is, 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 is closing closing the internet down to one, one, one circle. The thing is that, that when you ask, should we, as a, as a, as a top-level domain, be afraid of Facebook, you said yes. And I oh, said, I'm not a top-level domain. No, but we are. Well, that, well that's nice yeah. for you. But I'm, I'm look, thinking about this in terms of, should those of us who are trying to make money by selling services be yeah. concerned? And the answer to that one is yes, you should. Now, does that mean that they're going to put us out of business? Not necessarily. We, but that's like. But you know, the thing is, there's a difference between being concerned, being afraid, and not, and being so afraid that you don't act, that you're frozen. So I mean, yeah. the thing like you take say Google. Google is now a domain. Well, Google has been a registrar for many years, but they are now an active registrar. So Google is now taking market share from all the registrars in this room. So, you, okay, I understand now. You're talking about registrars. From the registrar's point of view, 
But from, a, from, from my point of view, I thought like, like one and a half year ago, or even, even one year ago, I thought that, that we, would, we would start declining because of Google and Facebook. That is turning around. I, I, I see that in our figures. I see it obviously that, that Facebook, we have a page on Facebook since uh, two years ago. We active, started to be active on the, on, the, on the Facebook page. And that Facebook page is driving customers to our uh, sign-in or our sign-up uh, page on, on ESNIC. So we're selling more domains through our Facebook page as we probably did before. Uh, but uh, uh, sorry, this, this is, this, okay. I think this is like the gentleman, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, is he here with a long beard? OK, he's gone. Well, but think that, that he was saying that, that there is a hope. And, and this is starting to, to, to changing. I think so. Lisa? Um, well, I think we should be afraid of both Facebook and Google. But I also think we need to be afraid of the new technology as apps. I know that the, the Netherlands has done studies on this, but I still think that we will see a lot of apps coming and replacing the, the use of, of a domain name instead, because it's easier, and if they kind of get a very good way to store it on the phone, that's going to be a, a really a big threat to us, I think. Yeah, we, we have a large uh, survey yearly in Sweden called the Internet and the Swedes, and now we see that there are some young people on question number one, are you using the internet? They say no. Question number two, are you using Facebook? Yes. So, yeah, could be a shift there. Okay, Johanny. Yeah, um, maybe I'm a bit old fashioned, or maybe it's because I'm a civil servant, but I'm not worried at all regarding Google or Facebook or apps because uh, when we have content in the internet, we need address for this content anyway. And it's only a matter of. Uh, brand protection and IMI company image, what kind of address is used. So if you just want to combine your company brand with Facebook, well, okay, it's up to you. I wouldn't do that only. And uh, if you're using apps, well, they always address to the content in the internet. Whether it's visible for the user or not, the address is there behind, at least. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay. Um, I will then ask the panel. Okay. Oh, great. Hello. I'm Annabeth Lange from the Norwegian Registry. Uh, I just wanted to, come to, to say something about being afraid of Google and Facebook or not. I think, yes, Peter, that what we have to, to, to think about is not what Google is today but what Google can be tomorrow. Because they have registered a lot of new GTLDs and we don't know what we don't know. What are they planning? Will there be something completely new? Who had thought about Facebook five years ago? What they have done with the market? And in my view, Google can do the same. And Amazon as well. They have also registered a lot of new GTLDs. So it will be very exciting in the future to see what they are planning, and we have to, to prepare for thinking differently in the future, in my view. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Annabeth. About the future, then, um, if I address the panel, what kind of shift will we see in the local domain name market in about five years? Um, well, we're going to see a lot more of .is domains. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, t talking about the domains again, uh, that, that I think it's, uh, there's no need for more, more top-level domains. There wasn't before the new GTLDs, and they're all mm. longer than the two letters uh, TLDs. If you use a domain for, a, for, a, for your email, you don't want to have to hammer many letters after the last dot. That's what kind of email app are you using? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's just my opinion. It, the two-letter domains, they have an advantage that, that's, 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 uh, that's going to be hard for the, for the new TLDs. But a, but a two-letter domain doesn't have any meaning. It, it has no meaning. No. When, whereas I go to, okay, I'm going to throw another bone to Francesco. You go to blackknight.cloud, 
What do you expect to see? If you go to blackknight.blog, what will you expect to see? If you yeah. go to mnaylon.social, what, what kind of content do you expect to see? And that's the, thing, the power with, with the new TLDs, is they have actual meaning. Now, we can talk and discuss and argue about you know, the value of a CCTLD versus a GTLD. And for those of you running CCTLDs, you have an incumbent market share now. Whether you will have that in five or 10 years' time is anybody's guess. Of course. Yeah. And, I mean, the, and the thing is, we don't know what Google are going to do. We don't know what Amazon is going to do. We don't know what people are going to do with apps. I mean, look at, look at the devices you all carry in your pockets. Mm. I've got an, an iPhone. Yay, who doesn't? Um, this is more powerful than the desktop computer I had in my office only a few years ago. Of course, I know. And we did have reasonable computers. But, you know, the technology is moving on. I mean, there's, there's, there's more technology in, the, in these badges <laughs> than there would have been in my, the entire university I went to, you know, in the first couple of years. I mean, this, it's always changing. Of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, Lisa. I, I think the next five years we'll see a period where you'll have a lot of people uh, buying different domain names for the same website, maybe even the same email uh, system. And then they'll settle on, oh, this is better than the other one, and then make a choice. So I, I think you will see like a lot of people uh, saying, oh, I'm a photographer, so I'll, I'll buy that together with .dk or .uk or wherever you come from. And then they'll find out what is the best use. And then they'll choose. Right now, there's so many, there's so much you don't know uh, about uh, the use and, and the, as you say, exposure of, of the actual uh, new GTLDs. So, so I think this is a very slow start, but uh, I think we all should be afraid of CCTLDs that someday this will hit us in the neck. Okay. Um, about the business model, all legacy TLDs, the new, new ones and a um, huge majority of the CC TLDs are depending on the register registrar model. If that, this model doesn't work regarding sales, I mean, our CC TLD, we are, we are quite commercial and especially also for the .nu domain. Uh, if the board, if we don't success in, in, uh, to reach our sales goals, we have a problem with the business model. Do you think we will see in the future more TLDs setting up their own registrar just for sales, adding on services? Well, I can tell you that we have had uh, this discussion of, of, of uh, over the years uh, changing to registry registrar, like all well, Johanne was saying that Finland is going to do it now in uh, next year. We are not going to do it. We're going to keep on having direct registrations. We just think that the average uh, customer is, is, is bright enough to register his own domain on our side. Of course, we have, uh, we call it ISPs. We have providers, uh, about 110 providers uh, all over, like I told before, and they are selling the domains for up to $100. Beautiful dot is domain. But uh, what I heard that the, the uh, Hong Kong domain is, is having a revision now, changing back from, from registry registrar model by di back to direct registrations. So I guess that, that the more GTLDs we will, we will see, we will have more direct registrations. Uh, that, that's my guess. I, I don't know. I think the, the, those those GTLDs they they will they will they will have to uh, well, they, like like dot pro I was just reading about it dot pro has opened up now you don't have to be a pro to get a dot pro or anymore so this is going to be a struggle with so many so many T, uh, TLDs so many new TLDs most of them are not going to succeed I don't I don't think so but who knows okay you want it. Uh, I think we're going to see a big change in the coming years because uh, currently 
there are well quite few registries and a lot of registrars. So it means that the registry can choose quite freely what registrars they are using with whom they are doing business. But in the future, when we are having those new GTLDs and, and a lot of them, so this, uh, this will be changed. So there will be quite many registries and maybe less registrars than we are having nowadays. So in the future, it's the registrars who can choose which registries they are working with. And that's a big change. And uh, I think uh, keeping that in mind, those uh, old CCTLDs and existing CCTLDs, uh, we have to change the way how we are working. So we have to leave that comfort zone that we are used to be in and try to work more closely with the registrars and to be a better partner with them. Okay, Lisa. Uh, it's, it's very easy for .dk because we're not allowed to have any other business than administering the .dk domain names. But I will echo Johanny in that I think it's very important and we're also moving in this direction that we work closer together with our registrars, making it easier for them uh, being better in the IPP uh, part of the business. So, so we as a registry has uh, uh, moved our focus away from the registrant to the registrars. And uh, even though we're a sole registry, we will have more focus on the registrars now. Okay. Mikael, do you have any comment about... Oh, I've got plenty of comments on this yeah. one. Um, I, I mean, the, so. <laughs> Well, obviously. No, I mean, the, the thing I suppose is this, that it depends a lot on the, the business model. Um, there are certain new TLDs which are very, very restrictive, um, which means that they're completely unattractive for most registrars to, to deal with because they're too complicated. Um, I can think of several like uh, .wed, which has some of the craziest, stupidest rules for a new TLD I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the idea being that you register a .wed domain name for a maximum of two years because there's such a big demand for .wed that these domains have to be recycled. Um, if somebody wants to go to NTLD stats and check how many .wed domain names have been registered so far, I would be very surprised if it's gone over 1,000. Benny, can you check for me, please? Um, .pharmacy, you need to be you know, certified, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a bunch of other ones like that. So for them to be working with a select number of registrars or to have you know, a vertically integrated registrar, I can see why that would make sense. But for an open TLD, you want to compete against, against my company and against GoDaddy or against any of the other big registrars? I mean, go for it. But, you know, don't be surprised when you fall flat on your face. I mean, the reality is that, you know, companies such as ourselves and GoDaddy, hi, Stefano, um, you know, they have, and we have, you know, spe we've specialized in offering, you know, the entire thing, the full customer service, everything else. Whereas registries, you should be focused on what you do well, which generally speaking is, is running back-end things and working better with registrars would be better. But I mean, it's, it's not registrars, it's more of a kind of the channel versus retail. But I mean, if it's, you it's just, just a domain, it's just a, such a simple thing. Try explaining try explain, try explain that <laughs> yeah, to my yeah, mother. No. Well, explain we have. that to my <clears throat> mother. You tell my mother yeah, yeah. how to register a domain name and how to set up DNS. Well, like, I'll give uh, you her telephone number. <laughs> uh, let, I will do let it. Your mother call, <laughs> let your mother go on to esnick.is and she will, she will be able, how is she, th th that's she will be able to register a domain in okay. 30 seconds. Okay, do, you want, do, do we want to place a bet on this? <laughs> I'll bet with your mother. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay, we'll talk about this afterwards. Okay. Uh, we're running out of time. It's time for lunch. But do we have any last questions from the audience? Yes? Anna? <laughs> Hello, my name is Kirsi Sunila Putilin. I'm uh, a lawyer for DOTFI. But I just wanted to say one comment about uh, that, uh, what Mikele was saying that. Uh, uh, country code doesn't mean anything because I think that 
One important factor is also the language, because uh, we are able to provide the services in one's own language, as all CCTLDs can do that. And also, .fi means for the Finns. It really means something. So I think at least this is one advantage for all the CCTLDs. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? No? Then it's time for lunch.